Welcome to this Bridgewater Now update, I'm John Locke. After 36 seasons, Bridgewater State men's basketball head coach Joe Faroba has retired. The announcement came last week and was released on the men's basketball page on BSU's website, and the now former coach released a statement thanking staff, players, and the university. That statement reads, quote, I have truly enjoyed working at Bridgewater State and sincerely appreciate the staff support provided to me during my 36 years as part of athletics and the BSU community. To all of the players and their families that have trusted and believed in me and allowed me to coach you hard both on the court and in the game of life, I truly appreciate all of your hard work, sacrifice, loyalty, and dedication in both the good times and in tough times, end quote. Aroba took over for Mark Champagne in 1992 and took the program to the NCAA tournament seven times, including a trip to the Sweet 16 back in 2009. That was the high point of a nine-season stretch that saw BSU finish at or above 500, something not accomplished since the first years of the program back over 100 years ago. The MASCAC named him Coach of the Year four times and was inducted not just into the BSU Athletics Hall of Fame in 2013, but also the New England Basketball Hall of Fame in 2015. BSU Athletic Director Dr. Mary Beth Lamb released a statement on Joe Faroba's retirement saying, quote, Joe Faroba was one of the first people to welcome me to BSU nearly 11 years ago. His impact on both the basketball program as well as the entire athletics program can never be overestimated. Joe is BSU basketball, end quote. We'll have more from Bridgewater State and the spring sports teams coming up in just a little bit. Many high school seniors are preparing for a whirlwind time in their lives over the next few weeks, including graduation, proms, and of course, a number of parties. With all the good things that are about to happen, there is of course the risk for tragedy to strike on roadways, and that was something a number of local groups is hoping to avoid. Last week, local first responders teamed up with Boston MedFlight Bridging Lives in the High Point Treatment Center in staging a crash to show the real life implications of distracted and impaired driving. Students gathered around the crash scene, which was staged as a fatal scene with arrests, med flights, and a hearse. After the demonstration, the students were brought into the auditorium for a discussion on what they had seen, and the images were on the Bridgewater Fire Department's Facebook page with the photos taken by RSS Photography. On last week's update, we told you about a rise in COVID numbers. While for those who have recovered from COVID, there may be some dealing with some long-term complications from the virus. The symptoms are wide-ranging, but a common symptom is difficulties with sleep. Sleep disorders are one of the commonest symptoms that nowadays our patients who suffer from acute infection are having these days. So, and mainly that what, what we are finding is that they complain of insomnia, uh, fatigue, um, also brain fog, a lot of them uh, complain about these, and also we see sometimes circadian rhythm disorders. That disorder occurs when a person's internal clock is out of sync with their environment. Insomnia, daytime sleepiness, difficulty waking up, depression, and stress may result from circadian rhythm disorder. Doctors say they don't know why some COVID long haulers are experiencing that issue and it's something they are still trying to understand. Although there are many questions about the length of the symptoms, they are treatable. This is just from my personal experience that those patients that were seen a year ago uh, in our clinic, some of them that are already after 10, 12 months of treatment, I can see some of them are improving he, their sleep issues, but there is no exact data or the literature hasn't revealed for how long these symptoms are going to last. If you've recovered from COVID but are still dealing with sleep issues, consult your physician because sleep does play an important role in your health. Turning to sports, and it has been a crazy time for spring sports, and we start at the high school where Mike Connolly's first season as head coach of BR's baseball team has seen a lot of success, including the Trojans ranked number six on the most recent MIAA D1 power rankings. The team in fifth place just ahead of them, BC High, who just so happened to be their opponent, and this one went into the bottom of the seventh inning, with Cam Morrison sending one to right field and scoring Colin Ronane for the 5-4 victory. Trent Smith, who has had a great season, got the start, going 5-3, allowing four hits and striking out five. 
After the game, Connolly told the Brockton Enterprise that when he got the job, he was told BC High was on the schedule, and so he circled the game, which is something he hopes to do again in the future, so the two teams can keep the matchup going. To Bridgewater State we go, where the lacrosse team and softball team both began their respective chase for the championship. Bridgewater State advancing to the MASCAC semifinal round following a 19-6 route against Salem State in the first round. They take on the Owls here, who are up 12-11 as Emma Cretella adds another one to the board here, splitting the defense to put the Owls up by two with 5.20 to go. But the Bears would come back in this one as Nina LaCorey waits for her shot and lets it fly by the goalie for her sixth goal of the game to put BSU to within a goal here less than one minute later. Savannah Harrington putting the spin cycle on her defender to fake out the goalie and tie the game at 13. Again, this is about a minute after BSU was down by two goals. So now we go to less than a minute after that. And you're going to see number 19, Catherine Tracy, lobbing this one up for Harrington, who finds the net for the hat trick and the goal that punched BSU's ticket to the MASCAC championship by the 14-13 final. BSU now 4-2 all-time in tournament play against Westfield State and quite the comeback on the road. In the championship game, the Lady Bears took on Framingham State and they would lose 18-10. BSU could not answer a 4-0 and a 6-0 run by the Rams in a game that saw a plus 15 and draw controls in favor of Framingham State. While the Rams won the conference tournament, BSU did have a significant turnaround, finishing above 500 for the first time since 2019. We turn now to the BSU softball team and Bridgewater State got a first round by and would match up with Framingham State. The two teams putting a double header in April, including a no hitter by the Rams. Going to the bottom of the seventh, BSU down by a run with two outs in a game they did not lead throughout Karen McLaughlin sending this Allie Moran pitch into the middle of three Rams that would score Madeline Klingel, who was at second for the tying run, sending this game to extras. Going to the top of the 10th, Kelsey McGill becomes the fourth strikeout victim for Kelly Reichert, who went 10 innings, allowing four earned on nine hits. She also threw 173 pitches in this one, facing 44 Framingham State batters. In the tournament as a whole, Reichert actually threw 400 pitches. We go to the bottom of the 10th now. Base is loaded. The 153rd pitch from Allie Moran goes through the catcher's leg, scoring Megan Sharon and punching the Bears ticket for the winner's bracket while Framingham State falls to the consolation round. Next up, a semifinal game against Worcester State, and the Bears would win 6-2, thanks in part to Janet Jolly hitting the lone home run of the game. Madison Dana and Olivia Silva each had a pair of runs batted in. That victory would match up Framingham State and Bridgewater State for the MASCAC Tournament Championship and a trip to the NCAA Tournament as well. And the Rams came to play in the championship round, already up one to nothing in the third. Shelby Rood at the plate, and she would send this one into right field. That would score two. She would finish the game two for four with three RBI, and the Rams would win seven to three. That would be that would be BSU's first loss of the tournament, so that would set up a winner-take-all championship game, and the Bears would fall seven to nothing as Framingham State starter Caroline Hughes was in control, throwing a complete game, allowing six hits and striking out six ending BSU season with a 23-16-1 record, their most win since the 2016 season. The baseball team sealed up the number one seed and the right to host the MASCAC tournament at Bridgewater State starting this Thursday. This is double elimination, but the Bears may actually have the early advantage as they will face Salem State or Worcester State. That game takes place 30 minutes after the two teams already play. And the tournament wraps up on Sunday afternoon. And don't forget, you can watch the coverage live on BSUBears.com. We'll have all the BSU games on replay on channels 9 and 98 as well. And we thank you for watching this Bridgewire Now update. I'm John Locke.